Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial on how to make an aim trainer in Unity. So I've got Unity Hub open right here. We're just going to make a new 3D project and name it aim trainer. And once it's done loading in Unity here, we're going to create an empty object and press F2 to rename it player. Then we're going to add a new component to it called player controller. Next we are going to right click on our player and make a new empty game object. Just call it camera holder. And we're going to go ahead and click on our main camera here, right click the transform and choose reset, and then we're going to drag it under our camera holder here. And you can see if we rotate our player that the camera in our game view is going to be rotating around and that's exactly what we want. So let's open up our player controller script and actually add some movement. So I'm going to delete all the Unity generated code here and then we're going to write void update which will be called every frame by Unity. And in here we're going to say transform.rotate vector 3up which is the y axis and then we'll multiply that by input.get axis raw mouse x so every frame we're going to rotate on the y axis by the mouse's horizontal movement so if we play the game now you can see that moving our mouse left and right will rotate our camera in the scene view left and right and that's a good start but we want to be able to rotate up and down too so let's go back into our player controller script and make a few new variables. I'm going to make serialize field so that we can see it and assign it in the inspector. Transform camera holder. And then I'll also make a new float vertical look rotation. Then in our update function, we'll say vertical look rotation plus equals input dot get axis raw. And then we'll pass in mouse y. And then we'll say camera holder dot local Euler angles which is the rotation in vector3 format, equals new vector3, and then we will say vertical look rotation on the x, and then zero on the y, and zero on the z. Uh, make sure you assign the camera holder here though, or else it'll cause you some errors. And now if we start the game, we will be able to move the camera up and down. One thing you might notice though, is that we're able to move our camera in a complete circle around ourselves. We can just go upside down, and all the way down and we kind of want to clamp that we don't really want to be able to go all the way behind ourselves so in our player controller let's just add a new line after vertical look rotation and we'll say vertical look rotation equals math f dot clamp and then we'll say vertical look rotation and we'll say negative 90 as the minimum and 90 as the maximum so now if we test the game you can see that our view will be clamped to negative 90 and 90 degrees the other thing you've probably noticed is that our Y rotation is inverted. So to fix that, let's just go into Visual Studio and instead of having plus equals for our mouse Y, we'll switch that to minus equals. And now the camera rotation will be perfect. Now let's make some actual targets that we can shoot. So out of play mode, right click in your hierarchy and choose 3D object sphere. And we will reset its transform and move it forward on the Z axis so that it's in front of the camera. And you might notice that the shading looks a little off here. It's really dark and kind of grayish. Doesn't look nice at all. So we're gonna go window rendering lighting settings. And then at the bottom here, we're just gonna check the box named auto generate and that'll make it nice and bright and look better. Um, let's right click in our assets folder and choose create material and call this target. And we'll drag it onto our sphere here. And then we can give it a nice bluish color or something to make it more identifiable as a target. Let's press F2 to rename our sphere to target, and then we're gonna add a new script to it. So choose add component, and then we'll make a new script called target. And this won't have any code in it for now, but we will add some later. And let's just make this target into a prefab by dragging it into our assets folder. Let's go back to our player game object and add a new script called target shooter. Let's delete all the default Unity stuff here and add void update. And we're also gonna add a variable, serialize field camera cam, because we're gonna need access to the camera to send out raycasts. In our update method, we're gonna detect if input.get mouse button down zero. So if the left click button is pressed, then we're gonna create a new ray called ray, and we're gonna set it to cam.viewport point to ray. It's very important that you use viewport point because viewport point uses a range of 0 to 1 instead of um, 0 to your screen width and height. And we're going to pass in a new vector 3 of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, so in the center of our screen. 
And I feel like viewport coordinates are a little complicated and need a little bit of explaining. So here's a bit of a crude diagram. If we have our computer screen here and we put viewport points on top of it, you can see 0, 0 is in the bottom left, 1, 1 is in the top right, and so 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 is in the direct middle. So if we create a new array with the viewport coordinates 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we're creating a array which comes directly out of the center of our screen. So let's shoot this array. Back in Unity, let's make a new if statement, if physics.raycast, ray, and then out, raycast, hit, hit. So if our ray hits something, then we will execute the code in this if statement, and we are getting out a raycast hit hit, which is just some additional information about the object that we hit. So let's make a new variable of the class target, and we'll just name it target, and we'll set it equal to hit.collider.gameObject.getComponent target. And this is just gonna get the target script on the object that we hit. So next we'll make a new if statement, if target not equals to null, so if the object that we hit actually has a target component, because you might have objects in your scene that do not have target components because they aren't targets, then we will just destroy the target.gameObject. Back in Unity, make sure to assign the main camera to our target shooter script, and then if we play the scene, we will be able to shoot the target and destroy it. And this is a good start, but it's not really a fun aim trainer if we only have one target that disappears once we shoot it. So the next step is to make the target randomly respawn. So let's open up our target script and delete all the default Unity stuff, and add a new public void hit. And then in our target shooter script, instead of destroying the target, we're just going to call target.hit. Let's go back to Unity and create a new empty game object. We'll reset its transform and add a box glider component. We're not going to be using the box glider for its intended purpose, which is physics. We're just going to be using it so that we can use this nice um, scene tool where we can drag these edges and create boundaries. And we're going to use this to create a boundary for the balls to spawn in. I'm going to make this into a little more of a box shape, and then I'm going to drag the transform on the z-axis to move it over to where our target already is. And make sure that you disable the box collider component, because remember, we're only using it for this scene tool. We don't actually want physics on it. We don't want our raycast to accidentally hit the box collider. We're also going to rename it to target bounds and add a new script to it called target bounds. Let's open up target bounds in Visual Studio and I'll delete all this Unity stuff. Then we'll add a new serialized field box collider col so that we can access it in the inspector. Next we're going to add a new function, public vector3 get random position. So this function is going to return a vector3. In here we're going to create a new vector3 called center and we're going to set it to the col.center plus the transform.position. And this is going to give us the center of our boundary. The reason we have to add transform.position to it is because the collider center and our transform.position are actually two different vectors. The collider center is an offset of our transform.position. So to get the actual center of our boundary, we'll just have to add col.center and transform.position together. Next, we're gonna make a few variables. We're gonna make a variable for the minimum of each axis and the maximum of each axis. So let's start with the x-axis. Float min x equals center dot x minus col dot size dot x divided by 2f. And this is a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna explain it. So we have the size on the x of our bounds here, which is just the width of the bottom edge. And then we have the center of our bounds, which we just calculated, which is in the very middle. And our goal is to find the minimum on the x, so this edge right here. To find that, all we have to do is take half of our size and subtract it from our center. So as you can see, if we cut our size in half and then subtract it from our center here, we get that edge, which is what we need to figure out where we're able to spawn our balls. And if we add it to our center, we're going to get the edge on the right, which is the maximum for our x-axis. And then we can also do the same thing on the y. If we take the size of our y, which is just the height of this edge right here, and we take half of it and we add it to our center, we're going to get the maximum for the y. And if we subtract it from our center, we're going to get the minimum for the y. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for our z-axis as well, but I can't draw in three dimensions. So. Now that we know exactly what we have to do, let's turn it into code. Now that we've done the minimum x, let's do the maximum x. So let's make a new variable called float max x, and we'll set it to center.x plus colt.size.x divided by 2f. 
and then we'll do float min y equals center dot y minus cold dot size dot y divided by 2f and then we'll do float max y equals center dot y plus cool dot size dot y divided by 2f and then we can move on to our z axis with float min z equals center dot z minus cool dot size dot z divided by 2f and then float max z equals center dot z plus cool dot size dot z divided by 2f and now that we have the minimum and maximum value for each axis, we can generate a random value for each axis between the minimum and maximum. So to do that, we're going to make a new variable, float random x, and we're going to set it to random.range min x comma max x, which is going to give us a random number between min x and max x. And then we'll do the same thing for the y axis. So random y equals random.range min y max y. And then we'll do the same thing for the z-axis, float random z equals random dot range min z max z. And then finally, we can generate a vector 3 out of all these random values. So we'll say vector 3 random position equals new vector 3 random x comma random y comma random z. And then we can just return that random position. And that crazy amount of calculation is just going to give us a random location in 3D space inside of that box glider bounds we set up in our scene. So we can use this to make our target go to a random location every time we're hit. But the problem right now is our target has no way to access this function. So we could just go into Unity and assign it in the inspector or whatever. But that doesn't really work well if we're creating our targets dynamically, if we're going to be instantiating them. So in our target bounds script here, we're going to make it into a singleton. So we're going to do public static target bounds instance. And then in void awake, we're just going to say instance equals this. And static just means that this variable is going to be the same for all target bounds classes, which doesn't really matter because we're only going to have one. But what's really important is that it means that this variable can be accessed from anywhere. And in the awake function, we're setting that variable to this script. So the target bound script in the scene will be accessible from anywhere by just calling target bounds dot instance. So in our target script, if we say transform dot position equals target bounds dot instance dot get random position. And back in unity, we assign the box glider to the coal field in our target bound script. Then whenever we click on the target, it's going to go to a new random position inside of the bounds that we created. And I'm getting a little tired of just trying to guess where the center of my screen is. So let's create a crosshair by right clicking in our hierarchy, choosing UI canvas and setting the UI scale mode to scale with screen size, the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080 and the match to 0 0.5 so that it scales evenly on the X and Y. Next we'll right click on our canvas and choose UI image and we'll set the width and height to 10, the color to red. And then if we run the game again, we'll have a nice crosshair to go off of. And if we want to have more targets at once, because looking at one is a little boring as well, we can just duplicate our target by clicking on it and then pressing Control D and dragging it a little ways away from the original. And there we go, we've got a second one. And you can do this for as many targets as you want. There's a few more things I want to change. The mouse sensitivity for the player controller is really low, and I want to add a field so that we can adjust that. So in our player controller, let's make a new serialized field float mouse sensitivity. And then wherever we're getting mouse input, so in our transform.rotate, we'll just multiply it by mouse sensitivity. And then in our vertical look rotation, we'll multiply that by mouse sensitivity as well. And I'll just set mouse sensitivity to something like one as a default. And back in Unity, we're able to adjust the mouse sensitivity in the inspector to anything we want. So I'll just set it to three to test for now. And if we run the game, you can see that the mouse is feeling a lot more responsive. I also want to hide the mouse cursor when we're playing because it's a little annoying to accidentally click on something outside of the game screen. So let's go back into our player controller and then make a new function void start. And then we'll say cursor.visible equals false and cursor.lockState equals cursorLockMode.locked. So it'll hide the cursor and then lock it to the center of the screen. And that's going to be it for this tutorial. In the next part, we'll cover scoring, missed shots, a timer, an accuracy percentage, and restarting the game. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters Mikels, Ojack Frost, Crazy Potato, Neil, Northarari, Twisted Sights, Dottie, Gaming Strive, Ghost Boy, Golden Trash Can, Mike, William, and X Zippy Zack X. Thank you all so much.